Here's a Hayward uh, Turbo Cell cleaning cap. I'll go over how to use this particular product with your Gold Line Salt Cell. One thing to note on the back here it says to go ahead and use two parts water, one part acid. I would strongly recommend against doing that. I've called Hayward. They said that's mainly for the service people that are kind of in a rush that want to clean the cell really quick. And if there's no calcium in the cell, that kind of mixture can actually damage the cell. So you don't want to do the two to one mixture. Most manufacturers will recommend no more than four to one as far as acid versus water uh, ratio. What I like to do is to leave a little bit of acid in a gallon container and I'm going to go ahead and fill this gallon up with water from the pool. This will give me about a six to one ratio here when I do this. Okay, got the G2 right there in the way. Which is actually a very good cleaner. Okay, so that gives me about a 6 to 1 ratio with acid to water. I'll take it back there and clean the cell. And you can see that the display is telling me that I need to inspect the cell. It's probably dirty. The corn reading is showing 3200, but it's definitely higher than that. I was here last week and it was about 4000. I'll go ahead and take the cell off and clean it. Whenever the cell gets dirty, your salt reading will drop. You want to turn the power off to the pool, that way the filter is not going to come on. You want to unplug the cell from the unit. You can also turn the power off to the unit if you'd like. Just take these unions off and they should come off pretty easily. Do the other side. And with the Hayward cell, it doesn't matter which direction you insert it. In fact, the manufacturer recommends reversing it every time you clean it to kind of help uh, keep the cell working better. You can see there's a little bit of calcium buildup right there in the center plate. It's kind of hard to see here. But you can see some calcium in there. The cell stand has an o-ring and it's got threads. We want to thread it into the part that's not where the core is. We're going to do it on this part here. I'm going to thread this unit in. You should thread in fairly easy. I'm going to get it all the way tight. And I'm going to place it down on a flat surface like that. Again, you don't want to use the end where the core is that you won't get it tight. I'm going to go ahead and pour some acid, the acid mixture that I made here. carefully pour that and you can see that's you know six to one or so ratio and you can see it's pretty powerful already so two to one would be really powerful you can see the bubbling that it creates from the calcium you definitely want to wear gloves when you're handling acid or cleaning your cell and so I'll let that set for five or ten minutes don't worry about it if it runs some of it runs over the top that's normal as it bubbles up and again if you're not getting any bubbling at all definitely empty the cell out right away and flush it with a hose, otherwise you could damage the plates. You should have a good seal on the bottom, there shouldn't be any water or acid leaking out of the bottom. But again, I would go no more than 4 to 1 when you're doing the acid to water ratio. 2 to 1 is extreme. I'm going to dump the rest of this water acid mixture into the pool. Get rid of it. You can see that it's doing less bubbling right now, the calcium is being eaten up by the acid. And so with a 6 or 7 to 1 ratio of acid to water, you can do a 5 or 10 minute cleaning. That should be sufficient. If you want to use a lower ratio, 10 to 1, you can go as long as half an hour without damaging the cell. If you don't have a GLX cell stand, you can definitely just use a bucket of water, drop the cell in there, it'll have the same effect. But having the cell stand is more convenient when you do your cell cleaning. You can see after almost 10 minutes that there's a lot less bubbling. You can actually see the cell plates now. So it's almost time to rinse this one out. It looks like it's getting pretty clean. And I actually left my hose nozzle in the truck and I'm about 100 yards away from my truck back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hose it off using the hose without the nozzle. It'll work fine. Okay, what I like to do is flush the acid out of there with the garden hose, kind of dilute it. Dilute it, I like to take it and dump the rest of it out. Your high pressure nozzle and you'll squirt it in there. You need to clean the cell plates, get any kind of calcium that's still in there. This won't damage the cell at all. I'm going to go ahead and unscrew the bottom where we attach the cell. Let me inspect it to make sure it's clean. Now you can see there's no calcium at all in the cell. I'm going to go ahead and connect it here. I'm going to go ahead and reverse the direction as the manufacturer suggests. And that way, the next time I clean it, I'll reverse it the other direction. I'm going to take the plug and plug the salt cell unit back in. Okay, I'm going to push it in there and make sure it's plugged in. should go in all the way, and that's where you know it's plugged back in. I'll turn the unit back on, the auto. 
I'm going to turn on to see if it's leaking at all from the unions. There's a little bit of water leak there. Let's take it off before we do that one. That happens sometimes. Let me try that again. I got that one, there, that one on there tight. It's normal for the no flow light to start blinking as it starts up and then it's going to actually go to generating salt hopefully. Still getting the inspect cell light. Hold the diagnostic button down for three seconds and it should clear it. Actually holding the diagnostic for three seconds will do the trick of resetting it. You can see that the salt level is 4000 now. Power's on and it's generating so it's working. And that's how you use the GLX cell stand with the Hayward turbo cells.